is the headquarter of our company. Um, all of the devices is, are being developed, produced, and manufactured inside this building. We do also have two global trainings, two international trainings every year, which are, which are done inside the headquarter of Alexian AG in Germany. Uh, this was the picture for 2019 training. Uh, it was supported by Genoa University from Italy and it was done inside Germany in our headquarters. So uh, we were supposed to do that uh, this year, but unfortunately, because of the COVID-19, all of our activities were being on hold. So currently on 2021, we will be able uh, to do our activities again. Usually we do have two international training in Germany, plus we do also have uh, continuous education and support uh, locally in, in each country. So if everything going fine, we will be doing also a lot of activities uh, in, in Myanmar. We do have uh, the main, uh, the factory is based in Zingen, the city in Germany, which in which we produce, develop and uh, manufacture the devices. We also have a service, uh, after service and maintenance centers uh, in, in Germany and in Dubai, Tokyo and Shanghai. These centers are responsible to make the maintenance and the after sales services of our devices. So for example, if, if you have any problem with your device, you will be sending your device to the nearest, uh, to the nearest service center to your country. Plus we do have also uh, around five uh, training centers in Zingen, Dubai, Cairo in Egypt, Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, Moscow, and Shanghai. All of these training centers also are responsible to make the training for our customers, our uh, engineers. So uh, also our dentists will be invited to attend the training uh, in these centers. On the screen in front of you, you can find all of the links of Alexion EG. Um, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, in which you will, you will, um, we will post all of our activities. Uh, we also have something called a study club. It's called Elexioneers. And in this study club, we always post uh, new cases from different dentists uh, internationally to, sh to share with you uh, different techniques. And also we uh, post uh, a lot of information about laser books, um, Everything you need to, to learn about laser, we always post uh, on our uh, website. Right now, I'm going to give you like a short introduction about the laser basics and physics. In general, not only about election. So um, let's say in the, in the first uh, 20 slides, uh, we will be speaking on in, in general about all all of lasers uh, in, in the market. So first, uh, you have to know that the, any laser device consists of two main important components. The first part is called the production unit and the second part is called the delivery system. Both of them are inside the unit. The production unit, you will not be able to see it because it is inside your device, so you don't see it, but you will be able only to see the delivery system. The delivery system which is responsible to take out the laser from the production unit and deliver it to the patient's mouth. The production unit consists of four main components. The first one is called uh, the laser source or the laser medium. Then we have something called the stimulating source or the stimulator. Then we have the 100% reflecting mirror and finally we have the semi-reflecting mirror. So this is the components of the production unit. From the production unit, we will be able to produce then to produce the laser. Here is the production unit. You can see it is inside your device. You will not be able to see it by your eyes because it is inside. But you have to know this information because if you are going to study an M, a master degree in laser, or if you want to do uh, a more detailed research or something about laser, you have to know this information. So first in between we have 
um, we have the laser source or the laser medium in this part. Then the laser medium, you can produce laser from different uh, kind of materials. You can produce laser from a gas or from a semiconductor or a solid material. It depends on your, it depends on the device that you have. So some devices, they can produce the laser from a gas, uh, from a dye, from a solid material or from a semiconductor. So there is a lot of different laser sources in the market. Then we have here the yellow part. This is called the stimulator or the stimulating source. And the stimulating source or the stimulator, it can be a light, it can be a source of heat, or it can be a source of electricity. Then on both of the sides, we have the 100% reflecting mirror. And on the right side, we have the semi-reflecting mirror. And at the end, uh, this device is totally covered by something called the reflecting tube. So it can condense the energy of the laser. Here is the mechanism how the laser is being produced. So first, we will have the atoms or we will have the laser source inside the tube. Then we will have the stimulator. The stimulator is going to produce energy. This energy is going to make the laser source to become excited. The atoms of the laser source is going to be moving and emitting photons. Then this energy and these photons is going to be reflected by the 100% reflecting mirror and then it go out on the semi reflecting mirror. So this is simply the mechanism of how you can produce any kind of laser, not only dental laser, but any kind of laser. It depends on this mechanism. Then we will go to something called the electromagnetic spectrum. And this, the, mm, the electromagnetic spectrum is responsible to tell you what, what kind of wavelength your eyes is going to see. So if you are going to speak about any visible light or invisible lights, all of these lights, they both of them have a wavelength. Our eyes can see between 400 nanometer and up to 700 nanometer. So if we have uh, uh, any kind of light or any kind of laser, which has uh, a wavelength under 400 or having a wavelength above 700, simply we will not be able to see it. So if we speak about the gamma rays, X-rays, and UV, all of them are invisible because all of them are under 400. And if we go to the infrared microwaves and radio waves, all of them also, we cannot see them because they are above 700. If you can see the picture in front of you, when we move more toward the 400 part, you can see that the color change simply from yellow to green blue and finally to violet and if you go more to the 700 you can see that the colors are starting to take the yellow orange and red so most of the dental laser and also the laser which is being used in medical field i can say that 80 percent of them are invisible we are not be able to see it because most of them they have a wavelength above 700 except there are few type of lasers which we can see with our eyes. Uh, we will speak about them in the next slide. Here is a small comparison between the laser beam and the normal light. So if we, we are going to speak about the laser, the laser is a monochromatic, which means it has only one color. If we compare it with the normal light, normal lights are polychromatic, which means it has different colors and different shades in the same beam. The laser is, it have uh, a parallel waves, but with the, with the normal lights, it doesn't have a parallel waves. That's why when you turn on your uh, light at your room, you can see that the, the light is totally scattered in the, in the room. So it covered the room, but with the laser, uh, this doesn't happen. Once you turn on your laser, your laser is being directed. It has a high intensity beam and uh, it moves 
together with the uh, with the movement of the laser source so if you move your hand to the right side the laser is going to move with that and if you do it with the left side it is going to move but with the normal light it's totally different once you turn on your normal light the light will be scattered in the whole room so in conclusion we can say that the the, the the laser has only one color it doesn't mean it doesn't matter if you see it or no because sometimes we have a laser which have a wavelength above 700 or 400 and both of them you will not be able to see them but that doesn't mean that they don't have a color they have a color but you don't see that color laser beam has a parallel waves the laser beam is directed and it it is having a very high intensity then we go to the most five important points if you want to do your application correctly in dental in when you use the laser in dentistry first you have to know five more five main uh, points the first one is called the wavelength second one is the power third one is the application time and the fourth one is operation mode and finally is the distance between the laser handpiece and the tissue we will go about uh, each one. First, we will speak about the wavelengths. The wavelength is measured by the nanometer, and the wavelength is responsible to tell you how, how is your laser is going to be absorbed by the human tissue. So we have lasers which are absorbed by the soft tissue. We have lasers which are absorbed by the uh, hard tissue, and we have also some lasers which are absorbed by both of the tissues. How the laser is going to be absorbed by the human tissue? First, you have five main chromophores or five main, uh, let's, let's call them five main uh, components which are responsible to absorb the laser energy or absorb the light energy. The first one is the homoglobin, then melanin, protein, water, and hydroxyapatite. So those are the five main Responsible to absorb the laser energy and also the light energy. So if we have a laser which is absorbed mainly by homoglobin, melanin, and protein, we can say that this laser is mainly targeting the soft tissue because the soft tissue is full of homoglobin, melanin, and protein. And if we have a laser which is mainly absorbed by the water and the hydroxyapatite, we can say that this laser is mainly targeting the heart tissue because all of our heart tissues, such as the bone, enamel, dentine, is mainly com, uh, consist of water and hydroxyapatite. On the picture in front of you, you can see that we have different wavelengths of uh, laser, and every wavelength is mainly absorbed by a specific uh, part of our body. So we will go first with the uh, diodes. You can see we have different wavelengths of diodes. So we will speak first about uh, the 810. You can see that the 810 is mainly absorbed by the melanin. It has a very high absorption in the melanin and with the homoglobin and the protein, it has also a good absorption level in the, in the melanin and homoglobin, sorry, in the, in the homoglobin and the, in the protein. And in the water, you can see the water, it has a very low absorption. And in the hydroxyapatite, it also have a low absorption. If we go to another wavelength, which called the 940, and this is mainly uh, uh, the wavelengths of biolase. So Elexion, we use the 810. Biolase, they use the 940. It has um, a lower absorption and the melanin, if we compare it with the 810, and it has a better absorption into the homoglobin and in the protein, uh, hydroxyapatite and water, it also have a higher absorption in them. So what, that, what does that mean when you do the application? It means if you are going to do a depigmentation of the gingiva, if you want to um, remove the dark color from the lips, from your gingiva, if you want to do the surgery, the 810, it will be better in that part because it is mainly absorbed by the melanin. So you will have less 
decarbonization when you cut, especially when you saw the video in the beginning of this presentation, uh, you can see that we are cutting the tissue with the minimum amount of carbonization at all. So we usually have a very, very low level of carbonization because our wavelength is mainly absorbed by the melanin. Then we go to the wavelength, it's called 980, and this is one of the most popular uh, wavelengths in the market. You can find a lot of companies which is producing 980, such as Sirona, uh, Soleil's, um, a lot of companies are, are using these wavelengths. It is very old at the meantime, and uh, it has a very uh, high absorption into the homoglobin, but it has a, a lower absorption into the melanin if you compare it with the 810. It has also a higher absorption into the water and hydroxyapatite. So what, that, what does that mean? If you are going to use the 980, for example, to, uh, to do a depigmentation of the gingiva and make surgery, it will make the surgery very good because it has a high absorption into homoglobin, but it will make carbonization because there is a lot of energy which is absorbed by, uh, by these wavelengths in the, on the soft tissue. So when the homoglobin absorb the energy of the laser, it will, be, uh, it will increase the temperature of your homoglobin and that will lead to carbonization, especially if the dentist is not professional when he's using uh, his laser. Then we will go to another type of wavelengths, which is called the blue laser. And the blue laser has a wavelength of 455. You can see it, it on the screen. Here is exactly where the blue laser is taking place. So the blue laser is visible. The dentist can be able to see it. If we compare it with the 810, 940, and 980, all of these wavelengths, you cannot see them by your eye because all of them are above 700. But if we speak about the blue laser, you can see it with your own eyes. It has a wavelength of 455. You can see it, it has a very, very high absorption into the homoglobin and also very high absorption in the protein. So this laser is very good if you want to do the surgery, but it has one, it has two main problems. The First one is because this laser is visible, so the dentist have to wear uh, very dark glasses to be able to see the, uh, the application field. And the second disadvantage of this laser is you cannot do uh, low level laser therapy with it. So the 810 and 940 are better to do this uh, uh, application. So if you want only to make surgery, then the blue laser will be better. But if you want to do a lot of application, such as surgery, static, and uh, low level laser therapy, it will be advised to use the 810 because it gives you a very wide uh, applications to use. Then we go to the hard tissue lasers. We will first speak about the erbium chromium. You can see here is exactly where is the erbium chromium stay. It has a very high absorption into the protein, very high absorption into the water, and also high absorption into the hydroxyapatite. So in the melanin and in the homoglobin, it doesn't have any absorption at all. So that means that this laser is mainly going to target the heart tissue. Then we go to another type of laser called called the erbium YAG, and this is also one of the very popular dental laser in the market. It has a very high absorption into the water and also very high absorption into the protein and hydroxyapatite. So that means that this laser is also going to target the heart tissue. Then we go to the uh, CO2, and with the CO2, you can see it has a very, very high absorption into the hydroxyapatite very high absorption into the water and also very high absorption into the protein. So that means that the CO2 is also going to target the heart tissue. Here is a small comparison between different uh, dental laser in the market and how we can classify them. So first, if we are going to speak about the soft tissue lasers, we have the blue laser, 
of 445 or 455. It has two wavelengths. Then we have the diet family, which is 808, 940, 970, and 980. Then we have the India and the CO2. All of these lasers, they have an effect on the soft tissue. Then we go to the hard tissue lasers, but these hard tissue lasers can also have an effect on the soft tissue. We have the erbium chromium, we have the erbium YAG, and also we have the CO2. And these laser, they, they are mainly targeting the heart tissue. So you can cut the enamel, you can cut dentine, you can cut the bone with this laser, but you can also cut the soft tissue, but you will have one main problem is called um, the bleeding. So if you are cutting your soft tissue with any type of these lasers, mainly you, you will have a bleeding because there is no absorp absorption into the homoglobin. So if you are going to compare the erbium YAG, erbium chromium, and the CO2 together with the diode laser, with the diode laser, you will not have bleeding when you cut the tissue, but with the erbium and uh, erbium chromium or erbium YAG and CO2, with them you will have bleeding because there is no absorption into the homoglobin. Then we go to another family, it's called the low level laser uh, therapy or the biostimulation or biomodulation. All of them are, are, the, are names for the same thing. We have also the diode, we have uh, the KPT, which is a green laser. Then we have KRS detection laser, those also are diodes and they have a wavelength of 504 and 655. Both of them are visible, so the dentist can, can see them with his, his own eyes. And finally, we have the polymerizing and the bleaching lasers, which is used in your clinic with the composite or with the bleaching. Uh, and usually it has a, co uh, a blue color because it is mainly, uh, and also it is visible and it is also, uh, its shade is mainly because it is very near to the 400 nanometers, so it will have mainly a blue color. Here is a small comparison between the different uh, wavelengths of diodes in the market. So as we spoke already about the 445, the blue laser, this laser is mainly absorbed by the homoglobin and the melanin. It is very good for the soft tissue surgery. It has a very high cutting efficiency because it has a high absorption by the homoglobin, but it has two main disadvantages, which is this laser is very glowy and you need to wear a very dark glasses to be able to see the application field. And it also has a very, very high unnecessary cutting efficiency. So if the dentist is not really professional when he is using this laser, he may do some damage to the patient. So it requires a very high skills of the dentist. Then we go to the 635. This laser is also absorbed by the homoglobin and the melanin. It is mainly used for biostimulation. It has a very, very low power and it is only suitable for biostimulation. So this laser can improve the healing process. Uh, it can decrease the pain uh, if, the, if the patient is having some pain in his TMJ or some muscle pain. This laser will be suitable for that, but it is not enough to cut the soft tissue. Then we go to the 808 or 810. Mainly it, is, it has a high absorption into the melanin. Then also it has a good absorption into the homoglobin and a very low absorption in protein and water. It means that this laser will be very good for the soft tissue surgery and biostimulation. The main advantage of this laser that it, it can do soft tissue surgery very good and it can also, it is also very safe because it has uh, a minimum penetration depth into the tissue, which is maximum up to two millimeters penetration depth. So that's very good and also very safe for the, for the dentist when he is using this laser. Also, the 808 has an advantage because it can improve the production of the collagen. So that's why in Elexion, we have the ability to treat the patient who complain from snoring because we depend mainly on the collagen production to, to treat the patient who complain from snoring when they sleep. 
The disadvantage of this laser that it doesn't have any absorption into the water. The absorption is very, very uh, low. Then we go to the 940. 940 mainly has a very high absorption into the protein, homoglobin, and melanin. So it is also good for the soft tissue surgery and biostimulation, but it has a disadvantage that it can uh, make some burn in the tissue because it has a very high absorption into the protein and the protein is very sensitive to the, to the heat. So when you cut with this laser, if the dentist is not professional, he may burn the tissue and he may make some carbonization. Finally, we go to the 980. This laser is, has a very high absorption into the homoglobin, water, and it has a low absorption into the melanin and the protein. It is also good for soft tissue surgery and biostimulation, but it has a problem in case if you are treating the patient who complained from hypersensitivity. With the 980, you may increase the sensitivity for the patient because this laser is absorbed by the water and inside your dentine tubes, it is full of water. So when the dentine tubes absorb this energy, it, it will increase, it will make some itching effect in the dentine tubes and then it will also increase the diameter of the dentine tubes which means that the patient is going to to increase the sensitivity when uh, when uh, the sensitivity to the to the temperature then we go to the heart tissue lasers as we spoke already we have two three main I'm sorry, I think we got uh, uh, disconnected. So let's go back to uh, this comparison. So we can say that the CO2 is the strongest one to cut the, the heart tissue. The erbium YAG is also very strong, but it is much more stronger than the erbium chromium. And uh, the main disadvantage of these devices is that they are very expensive. So, um, and also, they are not as fast as the handpiece which you use in your clinic. So if you want to do a class one or a class two uh, cavity, um, I think the, the, the turbine or the handpiece, it will be much more faster than these lasers, uh, especially if we are speaking about the cost because these devices are extremely expensive and also they require a very high skill of the dentist when, uh, when they use it uh, in the clinic. Then here is a small comparison between the laser and the conventional treatment in your clinic. So with the laser, you use less anesthesia uh, for the patient, but with the conventional treatment, usually you have to inject anesthesia. So with the laser, sometimes you don't need to use anesthesia or you can use only a topical anesthesia. But with the conventional treatment, sometimes it is a must to use the uh, anesthesia. With the laser, you have less bleeding, especially if you are using the diet. 
So the bleeding will be very, very, uh, um, very low. It will be um, to a minimum level, but with the conventional treatment, bleeding is, is something usual. With the laser, you don't need to do sutures, but with the conventional treatment, most of the time you have to do suture and stitching. With the laser, you have a very clear application field, so the dentist can be able to see it correctly. But with the conventional treatment, the application area is affected by the bleeding, and the dentist sometimes he doesn't really see, and he needs to stop the application to, uh, to, to, to clear the blood. But with the laser, you don't have that part. With the laser, you have a very fast recovery and healing, but with the conventional treatment, it is uh, less than that. Uh, regarding uh, the, your request to send uh, the presentation, so after I finish, I will send you uh, this presentation on your email. So then we go with the dyed laser again. Uh, dyed laser can disinfect and decontaminate uh, the soft tissue, but with the conventional treatment, usually uh, there, is, uh, there is no disinfecting effect. So if you are cutting with the scalpel, you will, you, will, uh, you will need to use some disinfecting liquid. But with the laser, you don't need to do that because the laser itself can kill the bacteria and the viruses in the application field. Then we go to uh, the time. So with the laser, you can cut very short in, in a very short time but with the conventional treatment sometimes the treatment time is very long the laser is very very suitable to the pregnant woman and the children so in case you have a pregnant woman and you want to do a treatment for her the laser will be the best choice for that because some most of the time you don't to, you don't need to inject uh, anesthesia so the laser is very very uh, suitable to the pregnant and the children, but sometimes the conventional treatment, you have some limitation if you are treating a pregnant woman because you need to inject anesthesia and uh, that will be a problem for her. Finally, with the laser, you have a very less post-operative complication and discomfort, and you don't, most of the time you don't need to uh, use antibiotic or any medications, but with the conventional treatment, you have a very high post-operative complication and you also need to use some antibiotics after the treatment. Then uh, we will go to the power. Uh, if you remember in the first slide, we spoke about five main important points uh, for the laser, which is the wavelength, power, application time, and operation mood, and the distance between the hand piece and the tissue. So we will speak about the power. The power is measured by the watt. So if you increase the power, you will increase the cutting efficiency. If you decrease the power, then you will decrease the cutting efficiency. It, it is very simple. High power will cut more, less power will cut less. Some applications, we need to increase the power and other application, you don't need to increase the power uh, at all. So. I will let you know how we can how we can measure the power. So usually, if you have a very dark gingiva, that means that you have a very uh, that this gingiva is is mainly full of homoglobin and full of melanin. That's why it has a very dark color. So in that case, you have to decrease the power because the absorption will be very high. And if you have a gingiva which is uh, has a pink plain color, that means it has less amount of chromophores or less amount of melanin and homoglobin. And in that case, you need to increase the power to be able uh, uh, not to burn the tissue. So darker tissue means you decrease the power and lighter tissues, it means you increase the power. Usually for the soft tissue, you don't need to use more than 2.5 watts. So 2.5 is mainly a very uh, very high to cut the soft tissue. Usually for myself as Jad, when I use it in the clinic, maximum I don't exceed 1.8. So for me, 1.8 is very good to cut uh, the soft tissue. Then we go to the application time. 
the application time is measured by the seconds. So I just want to uh, explain one important point about the laser. If we are going to, to compare between laser and uh, the surgical knife or uh, the scalpel or the blades, with the scalpel or with the surgical knife or with the blades, when you push more, when you apply more pressure on the soft tissue, you will cut more. But with the laser, it's totally different. With the laser, we don't do any pressure on the tissue. So we don't push the tissue at all. We just try to be slightly touching the surface of the soft tissue. So we don't do any pressure at all because simply if you do pressure, nothing is going to happen. So the laser depends on the time. The longer you stay on the surface of the tissue, the better the effect is you are going to have. Because at the end, laser is some kind of a light. So you need to give your soft tissue some time to absorb the energy of the laser. If you work very fast, you will not give enough time for your tissue to absorb the laser energy. And finally, you will not be able to cut the soft tissue. But if you work slowly, and you give enough time for your tissue to absorb the laser energy, then you will be able to cut. So try to work as slowly as you can so you can give enough time for your soft tissue to, to absorb the laser energy. Here on this screen, on, sorry, on this slide, you can see uh, two different cuts. On the left side, the dentist move slowly on the tissue, so it give enough time for the tissue to absorb the laser energy. So you can see your cut is, is deep and it has a better incision and also it is well defined. If we speak about the cut on the right side, the dentist move very fast. So you can see that the cut is superficial and it is not, uh, uh, it's not very deep. So the slower you move, the better the absorption and also the your cut is going to be. So don't work very fast at all. Try to work as slowly as you can to give enough time for your tissue to absorb uh, the energy. Uh, I just want to confirm if you can hear my voice or no, because um, um, I think some dentists, uh, they don't hear my voice. Uh, could you please confirm if my voice is clear for you or no? Okay, thank you. So uh, as we spoke already, the slower you work, the better the, the absorption effect that you, you are going to have. So when you... When, you, when your patient come to your clinic, you can try to make a very, very small test on his gingiva. Try to use a very low power, for example, one watt, and test one watt on the, on the gingiva. If you can see that your cut is very clear and um, there is no carbonization and no smoke, that means that, you're, that your energy is good. But if you, once you touch the gingiva and you, uh, you, you smell the smoke and you find your cut is very dark, that means that you are using a very high power and you need to decrease the power. Then we go to the fourth point, which is called the operation mode. Dental laser have different operation modes. First one is called the continuous wave, gated mode and pulsed mode. So the continuous wave means that the laser comes out from the handpiece continuously, such as the water when it comes from your uh, pass tub. So it is a continuous stream. There is no interruption at all. The advantage of this laser of this mode is it has a very high cutting power and it is very fast to cut, but it has um, uh, one problem that it has a very high temperature uh, when you cut uh, the tissue. So if the dentist is not professional enough or he has not skill, sometimes when he uses a continuous wave, he may do some damage to the tissue. 
Then we go to the gated mode. The gated mode is similar to the continuous wave, except that we have a gate which is added in front of the laser source. When this gate open, the laser is going to pass, and when the gate close, the laser is going to stop. The advantage of this mode is the laser, you can use uh, uh, the advantage of the continuous mood and also you can avoid burning the tissue because when the gate closed, the laser is not going to pass and then your soft tissue is going to, to cool down. Then we go to the pulsed mood. The pulsed mood is uh, somehow similar to the gated mood, but except in the pulsed mood, we don't have a gate. But the laser itself, the laser beam itself, is coming out uh, in, in, into pulses. So the device is going, is going to give you one pulse, and then it will stop, and then a, another pulse, and then it will stop, and so on. Between the two pulses, the laser will be uh, very, very minimum. Uh, you will have a very low between the two pulses, so this will give you enough time uh, to, for the tissue to cool down. And it also allow you to use high power, such as like 50 or, or 20 uh, watt, for example. This power is very high. So with the pulsed mode, you can reach a very high power and you can decrease uh, the damage to the tissue because between the two pulses, the laser, there will be no, no laser or the laser will be minimum. So this will give enough time for your tissue to cool down. So just I want to, uh, uh clearly one point Lay at the end the laser is an energy when once the laser is absorbed by your tissue it will produce energy and this energy is going to produce heat it is going to increase the temperature of your tissue so when the dentist is working you have to give enough time for your tissue to cool down because when the temperature is increased very high you will have a risk to burn the tissue here is a small comparison between the continuous mood and the pulsed wave. So as you can see on the left side with the continuous mood, uh, you have a very amount of energy absorbed by your soft tissue. That means you have higher thermal increase and thermal damage to the tissue. But with the pulsed mood, you have less, uh, uh, less energy absorbed and at the end, less thermal damage. All of the dental laser uh, devices, all of them, they have two modes which you can choose when you do the application. You can choose either the continuous mode or the pulsed mode. Both of them are good, but except the continuous mode, it cuts more because it is much more stronger. So the dentist have to be very careful. And with the pulsed mode, it has a less cutting efficiency, but it has a better thermal control of your tissue. So it depends on what you want to do. If you want to cut more, you have to have better skill and then you can use the continuous. If you want to be on the safe side, then you can use the pulsed wave mode. Finally, we go to the fifth point and it's called the distance between the laser handpiece and the tissue. Some application you need to touch the tissue and other application you don't need to touch the tissue at all. What does the mean to touch the tissue? You have to be slightly touching the tissue without, no, without pressure at all. You just stay on the surface. Don't do any pressure. Don't push your handpiece onto the tissue. Just stay slightly touching the tissue. And the application in which you don't need to touch, you have to be around from five to maximum 20 millimeter away from the tissue. We will speak later about uh, which application I need to touch and which application and I don't need to touch. Then we go to anesthesia. Which kind of anesthesia I have to use when, uh, when, uh, when I use a uh, dental laser. If you are going to use the diode and the indiag, in that part you, ne you need to use a plain anesthesia without vasoconstrictor at all. Because diode laser and indiag lasers they, uh, they mainly depend on the homoglobin. So if you inject an anesthesia, which contain epinephrine or adrenaline or a vasoconstrictor, that means you are going to decrease the amount of the homoglobin on the tissue and finally 
uh, uh, when the homoglobin level is decreased, your cutting efficiency also will decrease. So the best type of anesthesia to use is the plain anesthesia without vasoconstrictor, without epinephrine, without adrenaline at all. You can use it topically uh, or a gel or a spray. Most of the application, you, you don't need to inject anesthesia at all when you use laser. So only uh, small drops or gel will, will be enough uh, for the treatment. Then we go to something called uh, the low-level laser therapy. And the low-level laser therapy, it, is a, uh, it means that we use a very, very low amount of power when we apply it on the soft tissue. This power is not enough to cut at all, but it is good only to improve the healing process of the patient. So what, what kind of, uh, what, what, what happened inside uh, uh, the patient mouth uh, when we use the low level laser therapy. For example, let's say that you have a patient uh, who made the flab and you need to improve the healing for that. You can apply the laser after you close your flab to improve the healing. You can also use the laser if you have a patient who complained from a TMJ problem uh, to, uh, to decrease the pain uh, which the patient complained. For example, if he has a clicking and he has pain, you can only treat the symptoms. You can treat the pain, but you will not treat the clicking. So first you have to know the reason of the clicking and then you can use the laser to decrease the pain. What is the mechanism of the low level laser therapy? Inside our body, we have a mitochondria, mitochondria cells. And the mitochondria cells, they are responsible to produce ATP and also re uh, produce nutrition for the other cells. Inside the mitochondria, we have something called the nitric oxide. The nitric oxide level, sometimes it is affected. It is sometimes increased or decreased. At any way, when the, when the nitric oxide level is changed, above or below the normal, the mitochondria will not be able to produce enough uh, nutrition and enough energy for the other cells. So that means that your cells will not be able to heal very fast. When we apply the low level laser therapy, the mitochondria is going to absorb the laser energy and the laser energy is going to break down uh, the nitric oxide and then the mitochondria activity is going back to normal and it will be producing ATB, nutrition and energy to the other cells. And then the fibroblast is going to be, uh, uh, the activity of the fibroblast is going to increase and then you will be able to treat the patient who complained from pain and also it will improve the healing process because the fibroblast is mainly responsible for the regeneration. So this is simply the mechanism behind the low level laser therapy what exactly happen uh, in, in the tissue simply is mitochondria absorb the laser energy, nitric oxide is going to be decreased uh, to uh, is going to be back to the normal level, then fibroblast and the collagen will be uh, increase the activity of the fibroblast and the collagen, which means in result uh, the tissue uh, sorry the healing process will be much more faster. Then we will speak about uh, the different type of uh, dental, la uh, sorry, of laser devices in the market. We have, there are two types of laser devices in the market. There are devices which called the open mood devices and we have another devices which called the preset devices. The open mood, you can control the power, the frequency and the pulse duration. But with the preset mode devices, it means that device will be will come from uh, uh, from the factory with a preset application in which you cannot control at all. The advantage of the open mode devices it, it gives you more flexibility, especially for the laser specialists who are using laser every day. But with the preset mode, it is um, it has an advantage because it is very easy to you, very easy to use, and also very fast. 
and it is very suitable for the dentist who want to work very fast without you know the hassle uh, to to set the moods and set the power frequency so the preset mood are very suitable for this kind of uh, of dentist the disadvantage of the open mood is uh, the dentist have to be uh, specialized in the laser he need to know more about the laser knowledge so he can control the parameters correctly but with the preset mood it is easier for the dentist because all of the application are already preset from the supplier so you don't need to control the power frequency all of them are already uh, preset so it depends on which kind of uh, which uh, on what you want to do if you are a laser specialist and you need more flexibility and more application then you can use the open mood devices if you want to work very fast you don't want to set the parameters then i suggest you to use a preset uh, devices then i will go fast in this part uh, if you remember in the first slide we spoke about uh, the laser devices that it consists of two main components uh, which are the production unit and the delivery system. So there is a lot of delivery systems in the market. Uh, you have the articulated arm, waveguide, and optical fibers. Here's an example of an articulated arm. If you see these kind of devices in the market, mainly this device is going to be a hard tissue, uh, a hard tissue laser because the hard tissue lasers, they produce a very high amount of energy and they need to use this kind of uh, of handpiece to deliver the high energy. Then there is something called the hollow wave guide. This is also a hard tissue laser. So if you see any device in the market with this uh, kind of design, mainly, or let's say 90%, this device is going to be a hard tissue uh, laser. Then we go to the handheld units. Uh, these units, I usually, I personally don't recommend them at all because they are very weak and also they get uh, damage uh, very fast. So the laser maximum can last up to one year or two years maximum. So this laser is not enough to do uh, all of the applications such as gingivectomy, uh, bleaching, uh, depigmentation of the gingiva. This laser cannot do it at all because it is not strong. Um, usually it can be used only for uh, for the retouching so for example if you have uh, something very small or some small application you can use this device but if you want to do a major surgery or a major application this device will not be good for that then finally we go to the optical fibers and uh, this is how the optical fiber looks like it, it is very flexible it allows to deliver the energy uh, from the laser production unit up to the patient mouth, uh, very easy. Uh, also, it gives you um, a wide range of sizes uh, from 200 and up to 1000 micrometer. Then we go to the initiation of the fiber. All of the fibers which comes with your device will be in non-initiated mood. Non-initiated mood, uh, it means it, it, is go, it is not going to cut. So let's make it very simple. There are two types of fiber. First one is initiated fiber and non-initiated fiber. So non-initiated fibers, it is not going to cut, but it, it will only disinfect the bacteria and coagulate the blood. And the initiated fiber is going to cut. So this is very simple. When you have your fiber initiated, you will cut the soft tissue. And when you have your fiber non-initiated that means you are going only to disinfect and kill the bacteria and stop the bleeding how we can initiate the fiber simply you can use uh, the eye mascara or something very dark uh, to initiate the fiber so you will apply the laser on the very on these dark surfaces such as the mascara or um, something very dark i don't recommend to use the articulating paper because articulating paper they are not dark they are simply more more blue so try to use something very dark in color something black because the darker the surface the better the initiation you are going to do you will apply your laser from 
uh, like two or three seconds uh, uh, interruptly onto the dark surface until the end of your fiber is being uh, black. That means your fiber has been initiated. Then we go to the correct cutting of the fiber. Usually after using, after treating the patient, you need to cut your fiber. Try to make the cutting to be a 90 degree angled because if the laser is, if, if sorry, if the fiber is not cut correctly, that means that the laser beam is going to be out interruptly. So in this picture, you can see here is the correct cut. You have a 90 degree angle. And in this picture, you have wrong uh, uh, cutting of the fiber, which means it has around 45 angle cut or beveled. So with this, uh, in, uh, if you see this picture, that means you have uh, wrongly cut the fiber, so the laser beam is not going to be out correctly. How can I know if I already cut the fiber uh, uh, correctly? You have to see this beam. You will bring a, a, a black paper and you apply the laser on it to see if you have a uniform circle or a uniform uh, uh, circular beam, that means your cut is correct. But if you see this picture in front of you, that means your laser is not, your fiber is not cut correctly. So you need to recut your fiber. So try to make sure that you have correctly cut your uh, fiber so you can deliver the energy required for the treatment. Then we go to different types of fibers in the market. First, we have the single use optical fibers. Uh, these fibers are mainly used by uh, BioLase and Dr. Smile. Uh, they are company in dental laser. Um, uh, these fibers are disposable. They can, they can be used only for one time and then they should be uh, uh, thrown away. Some dentists try to disinfect them or auto autoclave them, but they are not designed to be autoclaved. So if you autoclave them, they will be damaged. So simply you have to use it only for one time. The advantage of these uh, fibers, they, are, uh, uh, they, uh, they have a less risk of cross infection. So you have a very, uh, uh, you will make sure that you are not going to transmit any infection to the patient, but it has a problem that they are expensive. They are very expensive uh, when you purchase them because only one fiber is enough for only one case. So every treatment, you need to buy fibers for your device. Then we go for the uh, autoclavable fibers, which uh, we use as Alexian company. We use these kind of fibers. These fibers are autoclavable. Uh, you don't need to cut them at all because uh, they are designed by the manufacturer uh, to be decreased. So all of the other fibers, you need to cut them after each treatment, but Alexian fibers, you don't need to cut them at all. The fiber size will decrease by the time. Each fiber can be used up to 45 patients and with each device you are going to receive a cut of nine fibers. So that means if you buy the Electian laser you will be able to make 405 uh, patients for each cut because one cut will come with nine fibers and each fiber can last up to 45 patients so in total, you can treat up to 400 cases uh, with, with Alexion fibers. So uh, you will save a lot of money with this fiber cat. Um, most of our dentists who buy Alexion laser, um, they will not buy uh, a fiber cat until one year. So uh, this is the average of, uh, of our dentists. We can say if, if, you, are a, if you are a heavy user of, uh, of laser, uh, you will need to buy the cat after six, uh, from six to eight months. And if you are not a heavy user, sometimes you don't need to buy the cat after one year. Uh, 
Um, I received a question about how long do we need to initiate in a DART paper? Uh, usually, uh, maximum up to five seconds. So, but not continuously. Uh, you have to do it like uh, uh, interruptly. Like you touch uh, the dark surface and you move and touch and move and so on. Don't do it co uh, continuously to, uh, because if you do it continuously, you are going to uh, burn your fiber. So bring uh, a mascara, eye mascara, which is used by the ladies. Uh, this is uh, scientifically proven to be the best, uh, uh, the best initiating medium. And then apply your laser up to five seconds maximum on, uh, on the dark surface until the end of the fiber is being dark. Then we go to the optical fiber wire. There are some companies in the market uh, which is using uh, uh, this kind of, uh, of fibers. Uh, actually, the problem for this fiber is uh, you cannot disinfect them. You cannot autoclave them. So you also have a high risk of infection to give to the patient. Another part, uh, this laser doesn't, uh, sorry, this fibers doesn't give you a lot of uh, sizes. So with Elixium fibers, we have a lot of diameter. We have 200, 300, 400, and 600 uh, fiber sizes. But with, the, uh, with this uh, kind of uh, optical fiber wires, usually you are very limited to the diameter of the fiber. Another point is you don't deliver a full energy from the production unit up to the patient mouth because these fibers doesn't have the ability to, uh, uh, to carry out the energy correctly to the patient mouth. It has only an advantage, it is, is, it is very cheap uh, in the price, but as I mentioned, they cannot be sterilized. They always need to be cut and also they are limited uh, in the size. Finally, we go to the glass rod and the glass rod is usually used uh, for the low level laser therapy. Uh, the glass rod, uh, you can use it uh, to do the bleaching, you can use it uh, for low level laser therapy, and also you can lose, use it to uh, disinfect uh, and kill the bacteria inside the oral cavity. Just I want to add the small points regarding the diameters of the fibers. The smaller the diameter, the better the cutting efficiency because the laser will be more. Uh, uh, concentrated. So, for example, if you have your X-ray at your uh, at your clinic, the X-ray with a focal spot uh, 0.4 is better than the X-ray with a focal spot 0.7 or 0.8 because the smaller the diameter or the smaller the focal spot means the laser beam will be more concentrated, so it will cut more. So the 200. Micro, uh, micrometer fiber will have a better cutting efficiency compared to the 600, micro, uh, uh, 600 micrometer fiber. Then we will go to the Alexian uh, devices. Um, we have something called the DPL technology or the digital pulsed laser. Uh, simply, what, what does that mean? It means that we are using an LED lamp inside our devices to initiate uh, the laser. So if you compare the LED lamp and the halogen lamp, halogen lamp, they turn on very slow and they also turn off very slow. But with the LED lamp, they turn on very fast and they reach the maximum power once, uh, uh, once, uh, once they receive uh, the power. And once you switch them off, they will simply turn off and there will be no laser at all. So this is, the, uh, this is simply the explanation of the DPL technology. So that's why we don't burn um, uh, the tissues of the patient. I am, this is a picture of during the treatment. You can see there is no carbonization at all. There is no dark or black color when we cut because with the DPL technology, we can reach a very high amount of power very fast and uh, we give them into different pulses. So we give 
very amount, a very high amount of uh, of energy in, into different pulses, very fast. So we don't give enough time for the tissue to burn. Here is also another uh, a picture uh, uh, regarding the DPL technology. You can see there is no dark color at all. There is no carbonization because we deliver a very high amount of energy on a very, very short pulses and very fast. So we don't give enough time uh, for the tissue uh, uh, to burn because the tissue gets the laser into very, very short, short pulses with very high amount of power. And between the pulses, the laser will, there will be no laser at all. So this will give enough time for the tissue to cool down. Um, there is a question about uh, uh, the difference between the fiber rods and uh, the fiber tip. Actually, there is no big difference between uh, both of them, except in the uh, in the in the low level. Uh, sorry, in the glass rods, the glass rod will deliver uh, less amount of energy compared to the fiber tip. So the fiber tip is is mainly uh, focused. It is mainly concentrated. So the fiber tip can cut the tissue, but the glass rod cannot cut the tissue because the laser energy is being uh, um, exposed on the surface, not, not concentrated. So that's uh, the difference between uh, both of them. So with the fiber tip, uh, you will cut the tissue, but with the fiber rod, you will only make biostimulation. With the glass rod in the low level laser therapy, yes, you can uh, decrease the pain from uh, the trigeminal neuralgia because it, it has the same mechanism. Um, with the low level laser therapy, usually we target the mitochondria and we target the fibroblast because both mitochondria and fibroblast are responsible for the healing. And when they absorb the low level laser therapy, sorry, uh, the, the low level laser energy, they are going to decrease the pain in the trigeminal neuralgia. Here is another picture of uh, uh, the low carbonization on the soft tissue because of the DPL technology which we use in Alexion. On this video, you can see the cutting during uh, 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 here is the, 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 the energy during using Alexion laser. You can see there is no carbonization at all. Uh, the patient is not feeling any pain. And also, you can see the definition uh, of the cut. Uh, your cut is well defined. You can simply see the walls of the, of the cut. There is no carbonization, no dark surface at all. because we deliver high amount of energy on a very, very short pulses. And these short pulses give enough time for the tissue to cool down. Here is another video also to show you uh, the advantage of the DPL technology. So with Alexion laser, we, we have a very uh, low amount of carbonization at all. So the carbonization is almost uh, to a minimum.
Okay, regarding the water spray to cool during the surgery, um, you have two options. If you are using the diode laser, you can use the water spray, but not continuously. You have to uh, apply small drops of water and then you first you stop the laser and then you apply uh, water spray and then you work with the laser again. Because if you work together at the same time, the laser together with the water, diode laser, they have less absorption into the water. So the water will, um, uh, will 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 act as a barrier between your soft tissue and between the laser. So it will decrease the absorption of the laser into the soft tissue. So that means your uh, cutting efficiency will be decreased. But if you are going to use a hard tissue laser, it's not a problem to use the water at the same time because hard tissue lasers, they love and they like the water. But with diode laser, don't use it at the same time. So you can use the laser and stop and then apply a few drops of water and then start the laser, the diode laser again. Uh, regarding how we can protect uh, the surgical smoke, um, we will speak about that in the laser safety uh, in the next slide. Uh, how you can protect yourself from the laser smoke and how you can protect yourself uh, from the hazards which are coming out from the laser. Then here is uh, uh, Alexion devices. Um, mainly we have uh, three types of dental laser. We have the Claros, it comes uh, Claros Pico. It has five watt. We have a Claros Nano 15 watt and we have a Claros uh, 50 watt. All of our devices, they can do the same application. They can do the same process, except that every device, it gives you more features and more uh, 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 more flexibility. So if we are going to speak about the Pico 5 watt, this device comes with a seven programs. These seven programs can allow the dentist to make 36 dental applications. So you can make uh, depigmentation, you can make soft tissue surgery, you can make um, um, uh, gum depigmentation, lip depigmentation, you can also do phrenectomy, gingivectomy, so the PICO also can make low level laser therapy and also it can make uh, bleaching of the teeth. So the PICO gives you a lot of application, but this device is a preset device. So you cannot control the power or the frequency. Uh, the device comes with seven programs already preset. So uh, the dent it is very easy to use. The dentist only need to click and start the application. Then we go to the Nano. Uh, nano is mainly uh, more advanced. So the Nano comes with 30, uh, with the Nano it comes with 36 uh, uh, preset application inside the device. Plus you can also have the free mode in which you can control the power and the frequency. The device comes uh, with 15 watt of power. So it gives you more uh, flexibility for, for the laser specialist who want to work uh, and modify the parameters. Finally, we go to the Claros 50 watt. Uh, this is our big device. Uh, the Claros 50, actually, uh, it is a very, very advanced uh, device. It comes with 70 dental application on the screen. The good feature of this device that it can guide the dentist how to make the treatment. So for example, if you want to make a gingivectomy, the device is going to tell you which size of the fiber you have to use. For example, 200, 300, or 400, it depends. And it, it is also going to tell you how long is the treatment time. And in case you, are, uh, you, wo you work for longer time, the device is going to shut down uh, to prevent any damage to the, uh, to the patient. With the Claros, you can uh, control the frequency, you can control the power, you can control the pulse duration, and also you can control the time between uh, the, the pulses. So this device is very good for the dentist who want to make some research about laser. Uh, the device is available at uh, the University of Genoa uh, Research Center. 
Um, there is a question about how can we reduce or control the inflammation after gingivectomy? Actually, uh, when you make gingivectomy uh, uh, using the laser, uh, I can recommend that you can use a Genji gel, uh, gel or periodontal dressing, uh, which, uh, which contains cement uh, and uh, an anti-inflammatory uh, 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 drug. So usually after the laser, you will not have uh, inflammation because during the application of the laser, you will kill the bacteria. Uh, in the field. So most of the time you will not have any inflammation, but just to make sure uh, that the patient uh, um, will be uh, fully healed, you can apply any periodontal dressing uh, which contains some cement uh, just to cool down uh, the soft tissue after the treatment. Then we have another product, it's called uh, the Periogreen. Um, Sorry. Yeah. Then we have some uh, another product. It's called the Periogreen. So the Periogreen it has an active material. It's called isocyanide green. This uh, this material actually, when you apply it on the on the infected site or the infected gingiva, it will make an attachment with the protein membrane of the bacteria. So. Every bacteria and every viruses, they have a protein membrane or a protein wall around, around it. So the protein membrane is responsible to protect the bacteria and keep it alive. The perigreen, when you apply it on the patient, uh, when, uh, sorry, the perigreen, when you apply it on the infected side, it will make an attachment. It will make a connection between uh, with the protein membrane of the bacteria and after you apply the laser, the laser is going to activate the perigreen material and then it will break the protein membrane and then the bacteria is going to die. So this is simply uh, how the perigreen is done. So you can apply the perigreen um, on the gingiva, uh, you can apply it in the, in the infected periodontal pocket, you can also apply it inside the root canal so this material is very good to disinfect and kill the bacteria uh, together with the laser. Here is how is our the devices are being delivered. So all of our devices, all of them, they have um, uh, a medical foot switch. All of them, they have the same accessories, same fibers, same glasses. So for example, um, if you buy the nano and uh, you need to upgrade your device to a Claros, we can simply take back the nano from you and give you the Claros and you can only pay uh, a small amount of money to upgrade your device. You don't need to change the fiber, you don't need to change the handpiece or the foot switch or uh, the accessories because all of our devices, they have the same fibers. Uh, we also have a buyback uh, uh, plan. So for example, if you buy the Pico and later you need to upgrade to a Nano, uh, no problem at all. We can take back the, the Pico from you and we can give you uh, the Nano and you can only uh, pay the money for the device. Um, there is a question about uh, the Claros. Uh, the machine is going uh, to give you like we, we are not going to give uh, a picture or a photo, um, but the device itself, it will give you a recommendation, like how long is the treatment time? So for example, um, let's say uh, depigmentation, usually the depigmentation uh, doesn't need more than um, two minutes in total uh, to do it. So if you, if you choose depigmentation uh, uh, program, the device will be set to turn, uh, to, to stop after two minutes. But you have also the option to use it in the free mode. So uh, this is how, how the, device, the devices only give you a recommendation for each treatment, how long does it need, and also which kind of fiber size you, you, you have to use. Then here is uh, the, uh, the Pico. It also, it comes in a suitcase. So uh, 
It is similar to the Nano and also to the Claros. As I mentioned, uh, all of our devices, they have the same accessories, same foot switch, same, fiber, same fibers and same handpiece. All of the devices comes uh, with a cat of nine fibers. Each cat can last up to 400 uh, cases. And as I mentioned before, also, uh, we can upgrade your device later. Uh, if you buy a Pico and you want to upgrade to a Nano, we can do that. Or if you buy a Pico and you want to upgrade to a Claros, we can also do that. And finally, we go to something called the Snore 3. So the Snore 3 is an application which comes only in the Claros 50 Watt. So the main difference between our devices uh, is only the Claros 50 Watt can treat the patient who complain from snoring. Um, the device is available in the uh, Research Center of University of Genoa, um, Italy. Uh, this device actually can treat the patient who complain from snoring uh, uh, within a uh, maximum up to five uh, treatment, so or up to five session. Usually, the patient needs three session up to five session. It, it depends on each patient. Uh, watch one session. Uh, it should take around 25 minutes, and then the patient is going to leave, and then the patient will come back again to the dentist after six weeks and to take the second session, and then again will come after six uh, weeks to take the third session and so on. So usually the protocol is uh, the patient will need uh, at least three session and maximum up to five or six uh, or six sessions. Between each session, the patient need to take around six weeks uh, to come to the dentist again, because uh, it um, in, the, in, in this treatment, we uh, usually target the collagen and once and the collagen to be completely produced in our body, it needs around six weeks to be completely uh, produced. Now we are going to speak about the laser safety. Um, I will go it uh, very fast. So there are different classification, different classes of laser. So first we have the class one laser, in which you can see it in your. Uh, uh, in your car, in your CD reader, in your PlayStation, all of these kind of devices, they are class one. There is no problem at all to see them with your eyes. You don't need to wear any glasses or something because this laser is very, uh, is, is very weak. It's not strong enough to do any damage. Then we go to the class two laser. They are also a uh, very weak uh, laser. You only need to wear uh, a plastic a normal plastic glasses uh, if you are going to look directly to the to the beam of a class 2 laser so only a, only a regular plastic uh, uh, glasses is enough to protect your eye then we go to the class 3 and the class 3 laser is um, uh, the laser that you can see uh, in the in the festivals or the in the happy new year um, uh, shows this laser is also um, this laser is dangerous in case you are going to leak directly into the beam. So that's why you can see uh, the laser source in, in this kind of parties. The laser source is very far away from the audience. So you can see that the audience is, and the people are staying in certain area, which is very far from the laser source because this laser uh, can do some burn if it touch your body. So as long as you are very far from it, and it is not touching your body, you will be in the safe side. Then finally, we go to the class four lasers. Class four lasers, uh, which are mainly, class four laser, which uh, are mainly absorbed by the homoglobin, melanin, hydroxyapatite, or protein. So with the class four, you have to uh, be careful and protect yourself, protect the assistant, and also protect the patient from these kind uh, of lasers. So you must wear the glasses at all of the time. So how we can protect our eyes? Usually there are certain protective uh, eye glasses uh, uh, for designed especially for the laser. The most important points to know about the protective glasses is 
every protective glasses, they have three marks on them. The first one is called the wavelength range. So this will tell you which kind of wavelengths uh, these glasses is going to protect your eyes from. And then the second mark, it's called the operation mood. Uh, it will tell you um, which kind of mood you can use these glasses for, like continuous mood or pulsed mood or both. And finally, you have the mark for the protection level. So this will tell you uh, about the filter of your glasses is, is totally covered. So the whole glasses is covered or only part of the glasses is covered by the filter. It is always advised to use a full coverage uh, uh, glasses. Um, there is a question about which wavelengths is needed to activate the photosensitizer. It depends on, on the product itself. So there are some photosensitizer they are th that need to be activated by the 810 wavelengths. There are some need to be activated by the uh, 980. So it depends on each photosensitizer. For example, for Alexion, uh, it is activated by 810 for the, for the perigreen. And also it can be activated by 980. Both of them will work. But uh, when you buy any photosensitizer, you need to read the recommendation about which wavelength is suitable for that. Then we go to the laser smoke or the blazer blooms, uh, which we received a question about it. So every laser is going to produce something called the laser bloom or the laser smoke. This bloom, uh, the <clears throat> sorry, this bloom is sometimes it contains some bacteria, sometimes it contain uh, 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 part of the, of the um, uh, protein which comes out from the viruses. So to protect yourself from it, you have to wear a special designed uh, laser mask. So there are a lot of companies which produce a special laser mask uh, to protect your, uh, yourself from the laser blooms. Usually most of the, of the laser which produce blooms are mainly the CO2 lasers. They, are, they produce a high amount of blooms, but if we are speaking about the diet laser or the dental laser, um, the blooms which are coming out from them are uh, very minimum. They are not. They are not a lot. So, but anyway, you have to to wear a special laser designed mask to protect yourself from the laser blooms. On this picture, it shows you which kind of laser uh, is producing uh, uh, the blooms and which kind of part of our body is going to be affected by these blooms. Here is, um, here is a picture of the laser designed protective mask. Uh, usually these masks are similar to the coronavirus mask. So uh, uh, they have a filter of 0.5 uh, 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 micrometer to prevent uh, the, uh, the, the proteins which are coming out from the bacteria or the viruses. So this is how the, how the mask is designed. And these are the marks which you will find on, on your mask. So it will tell you uh, which kind of, uh, of, of filtration uh, filter it's going to protect yourself from and so on. So anyway, when you buy, your, uh, when you buy, the, uh, when you buy the, the mask, uh, I can say that the surgical mask is, uh, they are enough. Uh, if you cannot find a laser uh, designed mask, then the surgical mask will be enough to protect yourself from the laser blooms. Also, uh, especially since we are um, in the COVID pandemic, so uh, there have been a lot of research uh, which have proven if you use the, uh, the iodine to apply small drops of iodine on the gingiva and also on the, on the lips when you, uh, when you are using the laser, this will uh, decrease the progression and decrease the, the activity of the coronavirus. So 
before you start your application, you can bring some iodine and you apply small drops to cover the gingiva and the lips of the patient, and then you can start your uh, treatment. Uh, this will give you more protection level against the coronavirus inside the patient mouth. Finally, uh, you can also use uh, uh, the HEPA filter or the extra oral suction. All of these filters, they, they will also protect you from uh, the laser blooms and also protect you from the viruses uh, and the, the, the smoke which is coming out from the laser. Uh, regarding um, the laser safety also, uh, it is always recommended to use a plastic an instrument or a wooden an instrument because they, they will not reflect the laser beam to your eyes. So for example, if you are using a diet and uh, um, uh, you have to use uh, an instrument with it, try as, as you can to use uh, uh, an, an instrument which will uh, which will not reflect the laser energy or the laser uh, toward the patient mouth. So if not, if you cannot uh, find any plastic in instruments, so it's okay, you, you can use the metal in instruments, but try to be away from the laser beam to prevent any unnecessary reflection to your eyes. Here are the applications that you can do with our devices, the Pico Nano and the Clarus. Uh, with the general surgery, you have around 16 application. With the implant, you have around three. Um, you can also support the peri-implantitis treatment. Uh, you can also do endodontic treatment. So we have, we have more than 70 dental applications that you can do with all of our uh, devices. Now we are going to go uh, shortly with the clinical application. So you can use our devices to disinfect the root canal, but there is one more, uh, there is one important point about disinfecting the root canal. When you use the dye, the canal has to be totally dry because if the canal is wet, uh, the water is going to prevent the absorption of the dyed laser and then it will decrease the disinfection process. So try to, to make sure that your canal is dry before you apply the laser. Then we go to the laser bleaching. Laser bleaching um, actually depends mainly on the bleaching gel. Make sure to use um, um, a red bleaching gel, or if you cannot find the red one, you can use a green or a blue one because the white bleaching gel is not suitable um, for bleaching because it, it doesn't have the capacity to absorb the, the diet energy. So the best, the best uh, bleaching material will be the, the red one. If you cannot find the red, I can recommend to use the green or the blue because they have uh, the capacity to absorb uh, the diet energy. How you can make the treatment? You will bring your gel, you will apply it on the tooth and you can leave it for 10 minutes. After the 10 minutes pass, you will bring your handpiece and you will apply the laser on the gel, 30 seconds if the tooth is vital and and 60 seconds into is non-vital. And then you will wash away uh, uh, the gel. Usually you will have around uh, at least two shades and up to four shades change uh, for the patient. Here is another case of um, laser bleaching. You can see it is the picture before is A3 and here is after the treatment, it is A1. So we got uh, two shades change. The good uh, advantage of laser bleaching is uh, you will have a very, very low uh, sensitivity for the tooth. So if you compare the laser bleaching with, the, with, the, with other bleaching uh, 
uh, devices such as Zoom, Beyond, or Flash. Uh, usually, the normal bleaching can cause uh, hypersensitivity to the patient, but with the diet laser, you will have very, very less amount of sensitivity for the patient. So that usually most of the patient, they don't complain from sensitivity at all after the treatment. Then we go to the application in pedodontics. You can, ex all of these application have been done with the PICO by the way. So all of the application that you see and the picture that you see on the screen, uh, most of them were, were, were done with, uh, with Alexion PICO. So here you can expose the unerupted teeth. You don't need to use any uh, anesthesia. Only topical anesthesia will be enough. No need to do any injection. Um, uh, the power usually doesn't exceed three watt. Here is the picture before, during the treatment, and immediately after the treatment, and finally after eight days of the treatment. Here is another case of labial phrenectomy. This is the picture before the treatment, and this is the picture during the treatment. And see the no carbonization at all. And here is the final result after six days. Another case of labial phrenectomy. Here is the picture before. Here is the picture after. In this application, usually we can use the fiber size 300 and, and 400. They are very suitable for this kind of application. You don't need to use any uh, uh, injection of anesthesia. You can only apply the uh, gel or a spray. You don't need to do any suture or stitches. And uh, the most important point when you, when you cut the freena, make sure that you cut it totally from the base and until the free gingiva. Because if you leave any part of the, of the freenum, you will have a relapse and a regrowth uh, from that part. So make sure that you have cut the whole freenum from the base and until the free gingiva. Here is also another case of that. You can see there is no carbonization at all with, with, uh, with Alexian laser. There is no red, uh, there is no black color in the cut and the healing process is very, very fast. Another case for the lingual phrenectomy or the tongue tie. Here is the case immediately at the same time after the frenum was cut. Also another case for phrenectomy. Here is the picture before, and here is the picture immediately after the treatment. Then we go to the application for the orthodontist. So the advantage of uh, using the laser by the orthodontist is most of the orthodontists, if they want to expose an tooth, usually they will ask the patient to, to go to the oral surgeon and then expose the unerupted teeth and later come back again to the uh, to the orthodontist. So if the orthodontist is having a laser at his clinic, he can have the ability to cut and expose the unerupted tooth and attach the bracket at the same session because you don't have bleeding at all. So you will have the ability to attach your brackets and make the cementation without any problem. So for the orthodontist, it, it is very, uh, very, very, uh, beneficial and important to have a laser device in your clinic because it will save a lot of time for you to attach the brackets at the same session. And also right now there is a lot of researches about uh, the low-level laser therapy for the orthodontist that they are using low-level laser therapy and biomodulation to control the movement of the tooth, to improve uh, the speed of the, of the movement of the tooth. So there is a lot of new applications uh, by the laser, uh, which are very beneficial for the orthodontist. After I finish, I will send you some uh, research about uh, uh, these applications. Here is also another case of exposing unerupted tooth. Here is the picture before, and here is the picture after. 
another case of exposing the unerupted teeth. Here's the picture before, during the treatment, and immediately after attaching the brackets, you can see that there is no bleeding at all, so you have the ability to attach and cement your brackets at the same session. Then we go to the recontouring of the gingiva. Um, recontouring of the gingiva, you can use a fiber size 300 or 400 will be enough for this application. Here is the picture before the treatment and immediately during the treatment, there is no carbonization, no smoke, no black color. And here is the picture three days after, 15 days, and finally after one month. Of course, in this treatment, the fiber is being initiated because you want to cut. So initiated fiber is going to cut the tissue and non-initiated fiber is going only to disinfect uh, the tissue. Here is another case. Uh, in this case, actually we did, uh, uh, there, there are three application, crown lengthening, uh, laser bleaching, and depigmentation of the gingiva. All of them was done with Alexium Pico. So here is the picture on the rift, uh, sorry, on the left side and on the right side, you can see the difference. And this case was done, uh, this is the final result after eight days of the treatment. You can also remove the fibroma. Uh, you, the fiber size will be 300 and 400. These are only a recommendation about the fibers uh, size. So you have uh, the option to use any kind of fiber you want to use, but this is just a recommendation. Also for the power, usually don't exceed 3 watts. So 3 watts is, is the maximum power to use. For me, as I mentioned, I only use maximum 1.8. But for example, some dentists, they want to increase the power to work faster. So it, is, it depends on your choice. You can increase the power and work fast, and you can decrease the power and work less. So it, it depends on what you want to do. Here is the frenum after it has been cut from uh, uh, the tissue. And this is the final healing result after six days. Usually you don't need to give any antibiotic to the patient or anything. There will be no swelling. There will be no inflammation after the treatment at all. Only the patient will feel like a small feeling of discomfort, which will, will be vanished within like four hours after the treatment. And then the patient will, will not feel anything. Here is another case to remove the fibrosis from uh, uh, floor of the mouth, sorry, from the ridge, especially for the, uh, for the elder patient. Here is the picture of immediately after the treatment was done. And here is the final result after 10 days. Then we go to the lingual frenum again. Um, usually the frenum should be removed from the, from the children when they are young, but some, in some cases, uh, some adults, they will not remove it. So, this case, uh, the patient age was above 25 years old, and here is the treatment after the frenum was cut. Usually, uh, in this treatment, we had to do stitching because the cut was very big. So we need to do stitching uh, to make sure there will be no infection after the treatment. Here is also another case of phrenectomy. This is the case which was done uh, um, for, uh, for a patient to, to make a gingival contouring. It was also done by the PICO. You can also remove the stones from the salivary glands. Here is the picture before the stone was inside. Here is a picture after the stone was removed. And here is a video uh, of the treatment.
then we go to the implant you can also use the laser to expose uh, the dental the dental implants here is the picture before the exposure and here is the picture after the exposure the good advantage of using the laser to expose uh, the implant is you only make a very small cut around the implant which is smaller than the diameter of the healing abutment or the gingival former so you don't need to make a horizontal cut and make stitching and, stu and sutures you only make a very very small amount uh, sorry a very small cut which is slower uh, which is smaller than the diameter of the healing abutment and then you can attach your healing abutment or gingival former uh, easily the advantage of that is the laser itself will help the healing abutment to 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 make the formation of the gingiva very fast another case of exposing the implant here is the picture before during the exposure and finally after the exposure. Also you have an advantage is the laser can kill the bacteria and disinfect the, the implant surface. So in case you have a, uh, in, um, in case you have a patient who come with peri-implantitis or even without peri-implantitis, when you expose the implant with the laser, you will kill the bacteria and disinfect the application area. So this also will give you a better healing uh, uh, effect and also a better prognosis of your case. Here is another case of recontouring and depigmentation of the gingiva. This is before, during the treatment, and finally the final result within six days. Then we go to the depigmentation. Here is uh, with the depigmentation, it is recommended to use a fiber 400 or 600 size. Here is the if the if the gingiva is very dark, you decrease the power because the absorption is high. And if the uh, the gingiva is not very very dark, in that part you need to increase uh, the power. Here is the final result within six days. Another case of depigmentation of the gingiva. Here is the picture before, and here is the picture after six days. This case was done with, with Alexium Pico, by the way. Another case of depigmentation. Here is before, during the treatment, and finally after the treatment. Then so I will skip the depigmentation cases because we have a lot of depigmentation cases here.
all of these pictures are for the pigmentation before and after. Um, I will go to the low level laser therapy applications. Yeah, here is another application for the depigmentation of the lips. You can also do it with Alexium Pico. So, but this treatment is very sensitive and it requires some skills. So uh, I recommend if you want to do this application to, to know more about uh, the laser physics and the tissue interaction, just to avoid making any damage uh, to the patient. So here is the picture before, and here is the picture after uh, the, lip will, uh, the lips were uh, depigmented. Then we go to the low level laser therapy. You can also cut the frenum with the, with the scalpel and you can use the laser to stop uh, the bleeding. So you have, uh, you have both options. You can cut the frenum with the laser or you can cut the frenum uh, with, the, with, the, with the scalpel and then use the laser to stop uh, the bleeding. Also, you can use the low level laser therapy to stop the bleeding from the socket. If, for example, after the extraction, Here is the picture after the bleeding was stopped. You can also use the low level laser therapy after the flap surgery uh, to improve and make the healing process become fast or faster. Also, you can use it after the phrenectomy to improve the healing and decrease the pain for the patient. Also for the abscess ulcer, here is the picture before, during the treatment, and here is the final healing after two days. So the treatment, usually you will apply the low level laser therapy on the abscess ulcer for five minutes continuously. The patient must feel uh, a change in the temperature of his tissue. So he should not feel any pain, but he should feel something like uh, a little bit hot on, on the tissue. So the patient should feel uh, the heat of the laser, but this heat should not be painful for him. Here is also another case for abscess ulcer. Okay, there is a question about how many visits uh, for low level laser therapy. Uh, it depends. For the abscess ulcer, you can do it only in a single visit. Most of the abscess ulcer, it need only one visit. You will apply the low level laser therapy on the abscess ulcer for five minutes continuously. And then the patient will not feel any pain. And within two days or three days, the abscess ulcer will be healed completely. But for example, if you have a patient who complained from pain because of the TMJ, these cases actually, uh, the patient will need around eight sessions. So. The patient will come to me one day and then he will take one session. You will, exp uh, you will divide your TMJ into five or six points. Each point, you will apply the laser for two minutes continuously. And then the patient will leave and he will come to you again after one day. So one day, yes, and another day, no. And then after day, yes, and so on. The patient usually need eight sessions. Uh, within the five session, uh, he will feel that the pain has been gone. That's, uh, that's regarding uh, the pain from the neuralgia and the pain from the TMJ. But for the abscess ulcer, you can do it only in a single visit. And, for the, and uh, to stop the bleeding after extraction, you can also do it in a single visit. Here is another case for gingival troughing and retraction of the gingiva. You can also retract the gingiva with the laser so you can take your impression instead of using the retraction cord. You can also use it with the CAT cam uh, and intraoral scanners to stop the bleeding so you can take your impression correctly. Here is another case after, uh, for low level laser therapy to treat the uh, 
the herpes. Here is the picture before, after the treatment, and you can also treat uh, the patient who complain from hemangioma also. You can treat it with the laser. Yes, you can use the low-level laser therapy in major abscess ulcer. Uh, it is the best choice for that. Uh, each ulcer will take five minutes of laser application. So you will use the laser um, on uh, 0.8 or 1 watt, and you will apply it for five minutes continuously on the abscess ulcer. And after that, the patient will not feel any pain for the ulcer. Then we go to the final uh, slide of today's presentation. I'm sorry it was a little bit long, but I tried to cover as much as I can. So as, I, as we spoke before, we can treat the patient who complained from snoring. So uh, usually we treat the patient who complained from snoring because they have a problem in their soft palate. Usually snoring has a lot of reasons. Some patients snore because they have a problem in their vocal cords. Other patients snore because they have some problems in their sinuses, some uh, because of the soft palate. So in Alexion, we can only treat the patient who complained from snoring because they have a problem in their soft palate. How we can do that? Usually the soft palate because of the age, uh, because of the, uh, the patient is smoking or drinking alcohol, and also because of the gravity, uh, some patients who are uh, exposed to uh, high gravity, uh, they will have a problem in their soft palate, especially uh, the cabin crew and the pilots who travel a lot. Most of these uh, people, they have problems, they have snoring problems because they travel a lot and they are exposed to a longer time of gravity, which will affect uh, their soft palate. So what exactly uh, we do in Alexion? We apply the laser on the soft palate, on the mid-right and on the mid-left and uh, in the middle of the uvula. When the laser is absorbed by the soft palate, it will produce collagen. When the collagen is produced in the soft palate, it will make shrinkage. It will pull up the soft palate and then it will open the airway of the patient. So here is the picture before. This is the first session after you apply the laser. Then here is the second session after six weeks. And here is the third session after again six weeks. So each session will take 25 minutes. Between each session, you, the patient will rest for six weeks because the collagen in our body needs around four weeks up to six weeks to be completely produced in our body. Um, the, uh, the advantage of the uh, snore treatment is not because the patient makes some voices when he sleep, but it is because the patient doesn't receive enough oxygen while he is sleeping. So on the long term, he, uh, he will complain from, he will have some uh, damage to his brain cells. Sometimes if he will have some Alzheimer's. So we treat the people who complain from snoring to protect the cells and uh, deliver enough oxygen uh, to their cells when they sleep, not only because of the sound of the snore. And this is uh, the final slide of today. Um, it was my pleasure to speak to you and I, ho I hope I can travel to Myanmar very soon to meet you. Um, I just want to add uh, one last point is uh, we have uh, uh, something called the study club. The study club of Alexion, we usually post a lot of cases. Um, uh, we teach you how to use the laser. Uh, we also make regular training. So I hope next year we will be able to make around four or five trainings uh, locally inside Myanmar uh, to show you how to do the application uh, on the patient. If you have any uh, questions, uh, you can write it on the chat or uh, you can simply ask me.
question is about uh, relief the pain during anti-snore therapy. Um, actually, the patient is not going to feel any pain uh, because we don't apply any, uh, we, we don't, first of all, we don't apply any anesthesia. We only apply the laser with a very, very low amount of power just to improve the production of the collagen. So it is not painful at all to the patient. It is only uh, the patient will feel some kind of a small change of the temperature. So a little bit heat, but it is not painful at all. It is, some, it is something like you, ha you have drink something hot. So that's it. But uh, it will not be painful at all to the patient. Usually all of the low level laser therapy uh, or the biomodulation are not painful at all. The patient will not feel any, any pain at all. Um, there is a question about the metal crowns. Um, no, it will not make any damage uh, to the surrounding uh, tissue. Because um, when the laser is, uh, is uh, reflected from the metal crown, uh, the reflection of the laser is not very high. So the energy which is reflected from the metal crown to the surrounding or to the neighboring tissue is very, very low. It doesn't have the ability to cut or make any damage. This is the first point. Second point, the laser is not harmful. So when we apply low level laser therapy on the patient, uh, sorry, on the tissue, it will not, it will not make any damage. It, it will only improve the uh, activity of the mitochondria and the fibroblast. So it will not make any problem uh, for the patient uh, in case you have a metal crown near the, to, to the operation site. So uh, don't worry at all, you can, uh, you can apply it uh, near to the metal crowns. Yes, regarding the presentation, um, uh, I, I will send it to you, but uh, uh, please, you can send me a message on on my email or Facebook or you know any 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 application so I can send it to you. Uh, okay, there is a question about can the patient feel tooth sensitivity of laser touch the tooth? Um, okay. The patient will feel sensitivity if you are using a very high power and if you are working 90, 90 degree on the, uh, on the tooth. Because 90 degree means that the laser will be focused on the tooth and it may cause some palpitis. So when you are using dyed laser, try to be away from the tooth surface or try not sorry, not to stay for a longer time on the tooth surface, just to avoid making any uh, pulpites. But if the patient have, uh, let's say, for example, you have a patient who complained from hypersensitivity and you want to treat it, you can use the laser uh, with a very, very low power and you can use uh, a desensitizing agent uh, such as a fluoride or something, but uh, use a desensitizing agent which is photoactivated or laser activated. You will apply it on the tooth and you can leave it for uh, two minutes and later you use the laser to activate the gel. This is how you can treat the hypersensitivity. Um, yes, uh, you can use the laser to uh, treat uh, the herpes.
Um, you are welcome. If you have any questions, you can simply ask me. I am uh, available for that. I just want to make sure, is there anything not clear for you, uh, something you could not understand? Um, today, the presentation was a little bit short. Uh, usually, uh, we make an advanced dental course. Uh, we will make it soon in Myanmar, I think next year when the, when the airport is open. Uh, the advanced course, it will be for two days. It will be a certified uh, course in which we will teach you everything you need to know about laser not only about Alexion, but in general, what everything you need to know about dental laser, uh, how to use them, uh, which is the best wavelengths uh, for which application, and so on. So um, we will organize that with Mr. Wang and O'Donna Smith uh, next year. Uh, directly after the airport is open, we will have a certified laser course for two or three days. Uh, to teach you everything you need to know about uh, dental laser. And uh, this course, uh, usually it is going also to be translated. So it will be in English and it will be also in uh, Myanmar language. Um, thank you so much for today.